down in Las Vegas. The home of the buffet. <laughs> this be the last podcast. We might as well go and toast it up. Because I know that's what you went down there for. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, Shannon. It's your man, Terry's J. And this is The, the last, last Podcast. podcast. Welcome, everyone, um, all of our new viewers, all of our old viewers, all of our family, all of our friends. Thank you for coming back and seeing us one last time, maybe. Yeah, this might be the last time. I don't know. Well, after tonight, this may be the last time. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is, is that last podcast, you never know what we're going to say. Uh, we're always trying to tiptoe the line without going over, but uh, as you can see, blurring lines is... Her forte, uh, <laughs> especially <laughs> there's a lot at the buffet. She and there were no buffets open. I was sadly, sadly disappointed. I know you was. <laughs> I know you were. Good Lord. Uh, oh. I mean, I, I saw your pictures you posted in Vegas. I was trying to figure out, like, did she go down there to go to the restaurants? Or she, you know, because, I mean, that was the majority of your pictures. You can also go to hell. So, uh, once again, <laughs> welcome to the last podcast. Yeah, that might lead right into our uh, disclaimer. Into our disclaimer. All right. So, disclaimer. <laughs> yes. After watching this show, you're going to say, how in the world do two people talk to each other like that? And but still remain friends. We will still be friends Absolutely. after the show. Absolutely. Um, there has not been a time that we were not friends and we've spoken to each other. What well, you know what? That was this one time I stopped talking to him for two weeks. Behind <laughs> behind Meghan Markle. We'll tell that story later. But I tell you, you I was did, done. You did stop talking to me. Two weeks. There is nothing that has been broken this friendship but that. Meghan Markle. Wow. I was I, I was forgot hot. about that. I was hot. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, we're still friends. Yes. We're here. Yeah, barely. <laughs> barely. That's, isn't that the, I think that's the title for the show. Barely. barely. Yeah. So, uh, but we are. But yeah, we'll 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 be still friends after this. Now, uh, part two of our disclaimer is going to give it to him. If you are offended by fat shaming, if you are easily offended by anything, anything, log out right now. Don't come back. Don't come back. Don't write me, write your senator. Half y'all, you know your senator is, so let's this be is real. True. Yeah. So this is true. um and we're gonna get to that in a minute. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that because we got that coming up. But you know what? Let's go on and get into the show. But before we do that, do us a favor, share this. Share. Make sure you comment. Uh we'll try to see some of your comments and work them into the show. Uh, but make sure you share this. It's absolutely free. We will not charge you to share this show. So do us a favor and gonna do that. Right. We will not charge. Right now. But if you drop your cash app, I will make a request. Oh, I thought you were about to say send some money. I was like, you doing that? I'm not sending no money. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's get into our weekly rundown. Let's get into the weekly rundown. Yes. So I'll let you take that because I'm, I'm sharing this. So y'all do us a favor and share this too. Okay. Um. Well, we did want to start out with our cultural endorsement. Mm -hmm. Just kind of give you guys a little... um um background on what we what we are wanting to do now we introduced this last week yes i believe we did so the cultural endorsement basically is we will talk about um the politicians that are coming up in the in the uh, next election mm -hmm. and we want to give you as much information as possible on who that candidate candidate is who um what they stand for what their platform is what they are running on and if those um candidates align with what we need or what we are asking for for our community then we will give them the cultural endorsement however if they do not we will let y'all know these people do not their values do not align with what we want now i will say this this is going to be mainly for the local elections that mm -hmm. we have here yeah um because a lot of the things that we complain about that we think that the president should fix really starts at the local level um so it's very important for us to um vote in our local elections yeah however we will be doing a forensic analysis on joe biden kamala harris and the orange turd in office only because we want to make sure that you have as much information as possible when it comes to the highest office in the land. Absolutely. Yeah. And those are important. Yeah. So we will be, that will be coming in, in you know, in, um, 
in the weeks to come, but we want you guys to get excited. We also, what we would need for you guys to do is to give us some information on what you are looking for in a candidate, because we want to reach out to these candidates and we want to ask these questions because I, <clears throat> excuse me, I am a middle-class double minority. And what I deem important, you may not based on your experiences, your demographics, where you are in life. So I don't want to go into into this thinking that everyone, you know, because my husband says that everybody doesn't think like you. I don't want to go into this thinking that I'm only going to ask the questions that serve my needs. I want to know what serves everybody, the majority of our needs in the black community. Mm -hmm. And we are a unique group of people. And we're not monolithic. No, we're not monolithic. You know, who, what's the word you use? Multidimensional. We're multidimensional. Yeah, yeah. So we are. We are. Um, we have a lot of different viewpoints. We do. Um, now, some of them we don't agree with, like your your girl uh, Omarosa and your boy. Uh, what's his name? What's what dude just got Corona? Uh, oh, he died. Yeah, but he still had the bleach. What's Herman Cain. Yeah, Herman Cain and all he the rest. He gone now. Yeah, so, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, we don't, you know, we, we don't have those beliefs. But No, we don't. Know. Well, we, we don't have those beliefs. But I will say, and I've and then we've said this before. We have. I know you're going to say. And I, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I actually uh, said this today on someone else's post. Black people inherently are the most conservative people. Yes. Especially the black male. The mm -hmm. black working male, middle-aged working male, is a very conservative um, voter. You would think that the Republicans would try to tap into that. Now, the the black female vote is more liberal, and that's why we are the backbone of the Democratic uh, Party, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. Um, but... But black women inherently too are conservative. Conser they, they have a lot of conservative values. Uh, values, yes. absolutely. Yes. Yeah, just the, the black. Contrary to what the variety. media and society wants to tell you, we are we are very we are a very conservative people. We're conservative in the way that we think, and and we are very we're cultural. We're, we're very familiar, like the whole family dynamic, the whole mm -hmm. family unit. Yeah. Um, because a lot of it is based on in, in in our religion. Yeah, yeah, in our religion, in our beliefs, and how we were raised. Um, and we we were raised with really strict uh, conservative values. We we were not as liberal as they would want you to believe. So, no. so having said all that, we look forward to giving you guys the cultural endorsement and going through. Um, uh, the candidates and just trying to figure out who is the best candidate for us and how they will better serve our community. And we will also give you some information on how we can help ourselves as opposed to always looking for a candidate to help us when we can do it at home. Yeah. So, um, so I give a shout out to you on that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, give me my shout out. AKA hey. lemon drop. At least that's what, uh, Mickey Allen just called you. on. Hey Mickey. That's so, my native American French. Uh, She's so sweet. So, you know, the, the, the lemon drop, does that have something to do with Vegas? No, but that's that's my favorite shot that I will order. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so okay. we, we'll get into this thing. Yeah. And uh, so first up, coming up, as we talk about cultural endorsements, and we talk about everything that's going on in the world, the yeah. biggest news just dropped that Kamala Harris was – uh, chosen by Joe Biden to be his running mate as the vice president. Vice president. Uh, she is She is the first, or if she wins, she will be the first African-American and first woman to be the vice president of the United States of what? America. Yeah. So um, we had first black president. So she will be the first black vice president. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I, listen... At first, let's get into I was this. I was really so before we get into her. At first, I was really the way things were going. I was like, I don't think we're gonna get him out of here, right? Okay. After the pandemic, okay, and the way that was handled, mm -hmm. uh, and then the whole issues with Armand Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, it is kind of walking up the people who need emotional stirring to get up and get awakened, which is most of the time, most of the Democratic Party, you talk about minority and younger votes. Younger votes. They have to have something that's stirring Because Trump is in office. Trump is in office because the younger votes who wanted Bernie instead of Hillary mm -hmm. and the black people who just... Had apathy. 
had apathy. We had eight years of black president. We good. We felt good. Well, we, we good. Everybody... It was like, how we chilling? Yeah. We good. Yeah. And that's what happened. And now, and so now we're stuck with an orange person. So we're finally getting a real person of color. <laughs> a back real in, person of color. Back in all. got color. Oh, he got color. <laughs> um, but. So this this uh, nomination or this um, I guess it's a nomination. Yeah, nomination to be VP. Um, go has, go to jump in there. Has stirred some controversy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, black people, we have got to do better. I understand. Let me tell y'all something. Some of y'all don't even know what the nineties crime bill is. Y'all just saw it on Facebook and went with it. Y'all have y'all have torn this woman down in the last 24, 48 hours. Come on. Let me just say this. Kamala Harris was not my was not my pick, my ideal pick. My ideal pick was Susan Rice, but I digress. And the reason why Kamala Harris was not my ideal pick was because I liked her better in the Senate. I felt like she was very effective in the Senate. Um and I watched, she was on a lot of judicial uh, uh, committees, and I watched a lot of her hearings. I would just watch those hearings during the day, and she was so effective. And what I liked about Kamala Harris is, um, and uh, I don't care who if somebody gets upset when I say this, but she had the, the great ability to make these um, arrogant, pompous white men just... Uh, you you could just see the fear when it when it came time for her to to ask her questions to um to interview you know whoever was was in the chair for the um, in in the hearings i mean she, it just her whole presence just kind of just took over the room and and i respected that cuz that that was that's greatness and i saw a woman of color who was handling her business now what i also like about her is they got the right one for for Pence. They got the right one for Trump, because she she doesn't take she doesn't take any 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 um any hits. I mean, you know, she's and and people say, well, if she was so great, how come she didn't win? I mean, it was it was a thousand. I mean, we had a lot of candidates yeah, out there, did. you know. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, because Andrew Yang should have beat all of them. That's just my personal opinion. But honestly, you know, Andrew Yang would have probably been is is the best choice. Yeah. But I digress. But y'all went in on the sister. They did. And they said that she wasn't black enough. They said oh, that daddy ain't black. They said daddy ain't black. They said that she just started called, she just started considering herself black when she ran for president. So let me just let me just say this. She went to Howard University in DC. Mm-hmm. She is part of the AKA sorority. How much blacker can you get? <laughs> Uh, you know, so <laughs> I'm just I'm just asking. It, oh, go uh, ahead. I'm I'm so I'm gonna ask this question now that we know because we knew that Biden was going to pick a female. He said it right. Yeah. Um. So and then we, he came back and doubled down and said he was going to pick a a female of color. Okay. So we knew that somebody was going to come up, and we had a few names on the ballot. Um, here's the one thing that I want everybody to remember at this point, we really shouldn't give a damn. I mean, wait, wait, wait. Say that for the people in the back who, who didn't hear you at this point, we really shouldn't give a damn. Not okay. a damn. Do you understand me? The reason I say that is you can like, or not like hate, whatever you want to use. Uh, to describe what you think about her or some of her policies, policies. or things like that. Okay. Um, your man said it best. What do you have to lose? Those are Trump words. Those are Trump words. What do you have to lose? So I want you to look right now and say, with Trump been in office for the last four years, what have you gained? Now, people will say... Besides the coronavirus. <laughs> people, uh, listen, because... Let's, since we're speaking factually, uh, there were, I can't remember the exact number, but out of all the total number of pandemic um, things that were set up by Obama, all were close itself for four. All right. Yeah. And Trump said, who could have seen something like this? Well, Obama in 2014 said there's going to, to be, be a day yeah. where something like this happens. And it's, it's and for those who 
don't like Obama, which I don't understand that. That that's all that's factual. It's on it's on tape. It's you on can tape. you can go find that. Exactly. So he said there's gonna be a time like this. Right. That was six years ago. So for somebody to say who could have saw this coming, anybody who had paid attention as much, if you had to pay attention as much to what he said then as you did about his birth certificate, you might would have heard this and probably right. would have kept some of those offices open. Okay. Right. So now what do you have to lose? Since since that that resonated so much with a lot of you Negroes hmm. when he said that, I'm going to say it right now. What do you have to lose? Now, on one side, you say, oh, he started the First Step Act. He gave money to HBCUs. Thank you, Trump. We appreciate that. I'm not above saying thank you for something that works in my favor just because it comes to somebody I don't particularly care for. Right. Okay. So, but when with that being said, at this point, you have to look up and say, we have to switch courses. Yeah. We have to change we can't, courses. We, we can't continue to go on the path that we're going on. Absolutely. For another four years? No, really? we can't. Come on now. We can't. We, we, we are in such a deficit in almost everything, foreign policy, um, taxes. I mean, everything everything that you can think of from healthcare to infrastructure to to education. I mean, we we are uh, we America really is a third world country at this point. Um now, so I'll tell you as you said that she wasn't your first choice Susan she Rice was. was. She was. She For was. me, just in the grand scheme of things, I'm looking at it as far as trying to win the election. Right. Now, I don't know if she strikes enough emotion. Well, I'm glad you said that. On our side to get the people. Well, well, two points. If she strikes enough emotion to get the people on the Democratic side to get up and go. <clears throat> and, or, and or can she sway the, the liberal, independent, on the fence, white vote to her side because they like her? I don't know. Well, I'm glad you said that. Um, he announced her what twenty four hours ago. Mm -hmm. In twenty four hours, he has raised twenty six million dollars. That's in one day. That's more than he's raised in a month. So, my little Facebook friends don't like her, but somebody is liking this. You know what? And, and somebody and somebody will like it. Um, and a lot of times, people who are the people who have the money and people that will contribute to a, a a a political fund you know they they will pour money into um those different campaigns right. but I, I i still have to worry and wonder about those other votes because if you think about it in the 2016 it was it was places like up in pennsylvania where the number in a city like philadelphia who can dominate pennsylvania didn't come out they come out that was that was places in 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 florida that has a a, a enough of a voting population on the minority side, Democratic side, whatever you want to call it, that didn't come out. Right. Uh, I want to say even North Carolina, well, things well, like every, that. So those are the people you got to get out. People stayed home mm -hmm. because because you start and I, I've seen this and I hate to, I hate to see this. The the two lesser of the evils or however they say it. Mm -hmm. Um well that that's politics. Let's not act like yeah. that. That from the beginning of time, it, it, in American democracy, that we've had these lily white, great roses and, and rainbow elections. No, first of all, they're politician. You pick the best politician that has the best lies. Let's just tell it what it, Look, tell it like it I is. I saw something today that said politics and voting is not like marriage. You're not marrying yourself to a particular person. It's like catching a bus. Unless it's you want to get on the bus that gets you exactly to your point. Yeah. But if that if you there's no buses that take you exactly where you're going, get on the bus that gets you as close Closest, as possible. Yes. And I'm sorry, Trump doesn't get me anywhere near. Trump took me to the other side. I wasn't even trying to go west. <laughs> I'm trying to go north. Now I'm stuck, okay? I'm stuck with, with a tax IRS bill I didn't have when Obama was in office. Oh, uh, and you still didn't get your stimulus check. No, I have not gotten my stimulus check. <laughs> He hear you talking about him. That's why you ain't so, got the your I, I can we we can do a whole show, and we we may actually do a whole mm -hmm. show on this. But um, okay. Now you said we were going to go through and do a uh, forensic, forensic analysis. Analysis. Um, that means thorough. So at this point, I know you JFK. Do we 
do we do we do we need that (laughs) d-i-s-d shut up (laughs) do we need that do we um yeah so well wait and, and i'm gonna tell you why we do because kamala harris is a black is a black woman okay i don't care what y'all say somebody said that because her dad is jamaican she's not black i that blew my mind okay but she is a black woman who was the um da the district attorney but she was the other yeah over over the over the second largest i think california. yeah california mm-hmm. the second largest and Regardless if you say she she was extremely harsh on black men or not, I, I don't know. Because I'm going to say this. Uh-oh. That's why this could be the last podcast. Let me brace myself. I, he- I keep hearing everyone talk about how she prosecuted black men and, and, and she she was so harsh on black men and she prosecuted. Now, and I do understand that the, that the American judicial system is screwed up. But are we more mad at the prosecutor or are we more mad at the criminal? Because if Pookie and Ray Ray continuously are causing crimes in my neighborhood where my kids have to grow up, where, I, where the schools are, and, and all of this plays into the the environment around me in my house, my property value, all these things, okay, comes into play. And if they are selling crack, and let me tell you something about the 90s and crack. That wiped out a whole generation of people, okay? 80s and, and 90s, yeah. And if you, 80s and 90s, and if you are really that upset, should we give some of that blame to the criminal? Now, okay. And I understand. Well, well, I under- well sometimes, sometimes and it's I'm the not, policies. I'm not, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about those who get caught up in the system and can't. I'm talking uh, now, because we know some people who have gone in and out of prison like it's it's that's that's just their thing. Yeah, but you know sometimes there are, you know, so we say the criminal versus the policy. Sometimes the policy creates the criminal. Attorney general, yeah. And Thank so you, sometimes it's um it's it's a policy that affects a family, a previous generation that creates a, cr- a criminal in the current generation. So so yes, we have to put the onus on the people making the decision to do a crime, but we also have to ex- examine and call out the people who are putting policies in place that are going to disproportionately affect our community. Because, because if, okay, case in point, it happened here in Texas. Uh, the young man who the judge said he was too rich to understand right from wrong. Right. Affluenza. Affluenza. Right? That would have never been given. To a black person, never. And you, I and, I, poor and I understand that. And that and that same affluenza teen, he and his like mother, Mom, and and yeah. I think his father too. Yeah, they have all gone back to jail. Yeah, back to whatever. But and and I and I understand that. But I can only I can only speak from my experience as a black person and who who have lived in a black, black community. Whoa, wow. yes I am. You better respect you was, my melody. Thought you was dark white or something like that. I'm actually dark brown. So anyways, um <laughs> I, so I, what I would like in the in the in the upcoming days and weeks is for us to um kind of be like the Republicans. Cuz one thing they got right is they would throw all of their all the support behind a candidate Damn if he do that. I mean, they don't care. It, Roger Moore is that his name? No, not Roger Moore. The, 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 um, not Stone. Is it Stone? No, it was uh, Roger Moore. I think it's Roger Moore. Okay. And he was the white man who had the rape allegations or something like that. Anyway, they knew it. They knew that he was, and they still supported him even up until the last vote. And that's why voting in Virginia, I think. And that's why voting counts because he lost by like. Like twelve, like it was so okay. close. You know what? They threw all of their support behind Trump and everything Trump did, right? Yeah. And so, and if Trump said no, then whoever else in that Republican Party better say no too, because he had the political cl- clout with the people to turn on any individual. Uh, but I have to ask this question: Do we want to be that? Yes, and here's why: because we have we have been the other 
the alternative for so long. And where has it gotten us? We we have lost um what what's the highest court in the land? We've lost those seats because Supreme Court. Supreme court because we we we're so nice. We want to play right. Damn bad. Playing right got us Trump. And let me tell you something. And I told you this earlier. We need to get, have that I D G A F attitude. And the and Obama and y'all know I love me some Obama. <laughs> Obama was trying to be nice and he was trying to be bipartisan and he wanted to da 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 da. And Obama finally said, I D G A F. We are getting Affordable Health Care, the Affordable Health Care Act passed through. I don't give a damn what they say because I've tried to play nice. I've tried to get all the other sides. But but since they don't want that, since they don't want to play nicely and play fair, guess what? I'm gonna use my executive order and I'm gonna push this through. That's that's they don't that's why they're so pissed off because the the affordable the Affordable Care Act Obamacare is not a bad act it could be it could be better mm -hmm. like like anything you know mm -hmm. there's room for uh, yeah. for improvement however the reason why that they want to repeal it so bad is because he he didn't he 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 said. I D G A F. I'm pu I'm pushing it through. So I feel like it's time for Democrats, for moderates, whoever, who whoever who are not Trump supporters, it's time for us to just be like, you know what? Damn it, let's go. We we we're tired of playing nice. It hasn't gotten us anywhere. So yeah, let's throw all our let's throw all of our support behind our candidates because right now we don't we don't have the luxury of trying to you know. Of, of trying to pick and choose what we feel because we, we this is a life and death situation. Because if Trump get if we in four more years of Trump, we are doomed. I'm going to another in, planet. Could you imagine him in four more years not having to worry about reelection? Let me tell you something. You you think Helsinki and and uh, what's the what's the uh, little country that he the quid pro quo? Oh, uh, I can't think of it now. But yeah, it's I not Czechoslovakia. Know. One of them. Um, you you think that was something, and and the other thing is he keeps skating by, like like, uh, Robert Mueller pretty pretty much said, I've I've given you all of this, Senate do your job, and the Senate did not do their job. Yeah. So can you imagine if he was untouchable and he, he he's not worried about? Can you listen? He might move Putin into the White House if uh, he gets a chance. Yeah, they're gonna sleep in the years. same bed. Because <laughs> we all know Melania is not in that bed with him. No, she looks like she's just disgusted by the. Well, he yeah, he puts her. He keeps her in the cryo chamber. <laughs> takes her out, thaw her out, and put a battery pack she in. Does always look frozen, <laughs> don't she? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, all right. So <laughs> we have to move. I can on talk here. about this all day yeah. long. Y'all know. Y'all know my my political. Um, so I, I'll close out like this. Trump said, what do you have to lose? I'll tell you, you have everything, everything to lose if you don't get out and go and vote. Make sure that you go out. Get your people, okay? Go out and ask those questions like you did when Obama was running. Go to your nursing home. Go get your grandma. Roll on over to the polls. Yeah. Do whatever you need to do. Churches, souls to the polls. Uh, do you know if they start if they, vote or die? If they are closing uh, polls on Sundays for early voting to try to steer the vote, well then guess what? Let's get them on Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. But we got to get the people out there to vote. This is when you talk about the biggest election of your lifetime. This is going to be it because I promise you, you don't want to see this thing in four years after. Yeah. And and stop saying a, a vote for Biden is the same thing for Trump. I'll be damned. No, it ain't. It no. Ain't the same thing. No. It ain't the same thing. No. I promise you. I promise you right now. Right now. This coronavirus situation will look a whole lot different if somebody else was in it. Most definitely. Most definitely. Remember, he's the one that said that this is nothing to go away. We're going to have zero cases. Oh, when it gets hot. You know, he said he said when it gets hot, it's going to go away. Gonna go when away. it got hot, it got worse. And okay? then and then he told us if you if you touch your hand real, don't touch your face. <laughs> but then he came back and said, "You are a patriot if you wear your mask." Now, which way are you going, sir? That's all I want to know. Which way are you going? And how, huh? and how many times has he worn his mask? Okay. Yeah. We got to move on. Yeah, we we got to move on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, y'all. W A P. Wet. I'm not gonna say the rest because uh, I don't want this to be the last podcast. Okay, let me. Uh, y'all went crazy. Yeah, y'all did. Y'all went. Y'all went batshit crazy for real over this song. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out why. Because 
y'all act like we didn't grow up with Uncle Listen. Luke. Listen, we came up in the era of two, two live, live crew. crew. Okay, Luke had girls doing stuff on. Luke came to <laughs> Dallas, went to Keys Park. They shut that concert down and said, <laughs> you cannot perform in Dallas again. He pretty much had an orgy on stage at a public park, not a closed venue. You know, back in the day, y'all old enough to remember reunion. Re he wasn't at reunion. He wasn't at the Starplex. He, he was, was at, at Keys Park. park. <laughs> like you can literally. I used to go over there and walk. <laughs> listen, Luke came out and said, listen, we having an orgy on stage. They shut that concert down and said, you, sir, cannot perform in Look, the city limits of Dallas I'm trying again. to figure out, please stop with the double standard. And please stop acting like we so holier than thou. Because Mystical did pop out with a song that said, I can't, came in with my, <laughs> I came in with my, in my hand. Yeah, like, come on now. Be cool. Is it, is, is it because they're two women? Yeah, like, it, it it's always a double standard yeah, when it comes it to women and, and their sexuality and how they express their sexuality. Oh. And, and it, it's, if you don't like the song, don't listen to it. Okay, now. Uh-oh. Come on. So now, we, we, we did come up in an era of that. We came up in an era of, uh, easy E only if you want it. Y'all remember we watched the box. Y'all remember the box? The box is where you had to go yeah. through and pay your money to see a video. We had bootleg cable, so uh, we just waited for somebody else to pay or something like that. Us too. But my mom would like to. you bed bed not? not Y'all wish you would. <laughs> so, so we watched the box. It easy E come on only you want. Start mixing a lot. Put them on the glass. Half pint. One leg up. Too short. You know, Devin the dude. Devin, listen, Luke come in, and we didn't know what Luke said, but we knew when he said, uh, 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 we knew it's going to be a show, okay? <laughs> Today, half of y'all knees ain't good, and if you could, uh, 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 y'all run to the dance floor. Y'all get two little pumps, and it's over. I so we say, came up in the, in that area where I it was I got some Megan knees. I, I, got some, I got a little Megan in my knees. You better ask my friends. You got knees the size of Megan. <laughs> <laughs> you got no Megan knees. Because I'm going to tell you what, if you drop that down like it's hot, it's coming up ice cold. Do you hear um, I need I need either Felicia or Mickey or Crystal to, to come on on here and, and confirm. For you? No, confirm what I said. Listen, listen she need, she need handrails and everything to bring that back up. <laughs> um, so, yeah. but everybody, everybody went crazy. Everybody right? went crazy. But it was, it was, but okay. So now it was two females rapping this, right? Mm-hmm. But do we forget Little Kim? Well, do we, do we forget, forget Nicki Foxy Minaj? Brown? Nicki Minaj? Well, Nicki Minaj came well, later, I don't like but Nicki I'm Minaj just saying when we were uh, when because, we were younger. Trina? Tr oh, Trina. Lit what? You don't know now? Trina Look, said she was... What? Yeah. And then, wait a minute. And then even a little bit later, Kaya came out with my neck, my back. Look at everything. Uh, so this is nothing new. No. Um. Now, I did go pull up a song. From a lady named Lucille, I want to say Bolton or something like that. 1935. Thank you, Mickey. Mickey said, baby, those knees are strong. Well, they got to be. You know what they got to carry every day? <laughs> <laughs> Them mugs better be reinforced. You hear me? <laughs> so oh, I can't wait to beat you up after this. <laughs> so, um, but 1935, she was a lady who, she came out with a song that it almost made WAP seem like a nursery rhyme. And I was like, they were doing that in 35. So this is nothing new. Um, yeah. But, you know, people people love to have false or fake, you know. I got actually. Uh, what, what, what is it called? When they just like, fake rage. Fake rage. Fake outrage. Let me tell you this. This manufactured outrage. Uh, my, me and my friend Felicia say that all the time. But let me tell you something. <laughs> oh, God. What is it? I, got, I had gotten to my Pawpaw's records one time. <laughs> and he had this. It was a song. Stoop down, baby. Let your daddy see. Now, <laughs> I, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about at the time, but now. Now you know what stoop down, baby. Let your daddy see, huh? W-A-P. That's what they were trying that's to say. No, wow. no that, 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 was, that was the old version of uh, Bust It Open, Let Me See You Bring It Back. <laughs> so when you listen to Bust It Open, Let Me See You Bring It Back, that was stoop down, baby. Let, let daddy see. Right. And Dima Junk and Millie, J honey, Millie Jackson is a whole yeah. walking porn, okay? And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of y'all mamas and daddies still go down to Blues Palace when they be having the hen roost and all that. <laughs> yeah. Listen, and, and some of them songs they be singing. Uh, so come on now. This is not. Now, okay, so I heard somebody say, I don't, it's like it's trash music. I don't want that to be the role models for our daughters. 
And so here's the thing. It, if Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B is the role model for your daughter. You have already failed. You have failed as a parent, okay? Because guess what? Um, when I was growing up, you know, Loop, that wasn't my role model. Oh, snap. <laughs> Look what your wrong mom. Oh, snap. Oh, God. <laughs> this, this is trash. Because get them all. Because I wanted to. Look, I, look what your wrong mom. I just, I just wanted to be able to say. And stuff started happening. You know I, You know what? I wanted to be Dame Dash when he was dropping. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. Well. You, you know what? Get this off. Get this off. This is done. This is true. No. <laughs> Seriously. Let me tell you something. Um. Yeah, you fail as a parent if those are your role models. Um, but this is out there. It's been out there. It's yeah. nothing new. So, like you said, it's manufactured rage. So it is. It yeah. is. So but I, I think when, you know, every once in a while, when a, when a woman comes out and talks like that, it's like, oh, and I'm like, wait. A minute. And y'all know, y'all know, y'all. It, if it's a woman of color, honey, y'all gonna have some negative to say. But anyway, I digress. Moving on. Okay. So we have a black dad here. And uh, as we're talking about the family structure on this show, we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, today's topic is the black dad. But uh, we saw this picture come up and it was a dad, you know, playing with his daughter mm -hmm. and he has the tutu on. Mm -hmm. So I sent the picture to Shannon and I, and I asked the question, is it too much? Yes, it is. Because you can you can show your daughter support and you can. You can show it's it's important to show her that you can play, you can you can be you know her friend, her dad, or whatever. But it's also important for you to show her positive, strong male masculinity. Um, the tutu is too much. Take it off. And and and, and I wanted and, and you don't to come say, for me. Well, I, I wanted I wanted you to to speak on this because you know as men were saying. No, nah, I'm not doing that. I wouldn't put that on. And so I saw a lot of women coming back at the guys like, you know, what's wrong with that as a dad? It wasn't so from a female perspective, no. understanding what what women need from men. Yeah, I, but I, I don't need my dad in the tutu. You know, I, I don't. Um, the fact that he's there, that he's playing, she seems to be enjoying herself. He's enjoying himself. That that's golden. Like like that is that is it. You don't you don't need the tutu to, to I mean what is a tutu even for? I don't know. I don't maybe maybe he wears tutus in his regular life though. So if he wears tutus in his regular life, well if he wears tutus do, in the regular life, do then, what you do. Then this is a whole different conversation. This is a whole different conversation. But we're talking about from a straight dad, yeah, playing with your daughter. And my personal opinion for me, I can't speak for you. For me, I'm not I don't ever want to see your ass no tutu. <laughs> I mean, you already, you're, you're already been like a lunch lady. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no more green beans. <laughs> and you got the ankles like one. So, uh, as a dad, and I have a daughter, she is not. I'm not putting on the tutu. No. Uh, to play with her, uh, I, like you said, I'm there. I am. Um, I, we, you know, we played a you tea present, party. Right, and we you, played a tea can, party. Get, I'm, I'm the prince. Yeah, that's this what I'm saying. You time. can, you can, you can, you can teach her in that moment how how to interact with a gentleman, mm -hmm. how to interact with a man, and you can teach her what what positive male masculinity looks like. Um, you know, you can you can play tea party. You can play dress up. She dresses up in her prince and stuff, and you can dress up in your prince stuff. You know, you can top hat or whatever but just whatever but you you don't have to take it to this level mm. i i just i just i don't know okay so now in sitting this picture there was another one that came up from our timeline yes and these were moms out of line who dressed up like dads i don't like it and i guess they were having like a dad's mm -hmm. day at school so the moms dressed up like dads to be there for their kids you can't you, you no just send an uncle to somebody you know, you know. Here's the thing. It, it's almost. It looks foolish. It's almost like it's a mockery. It, it doesn't, and it it doesn't. It doesn't convey the message. I guess that they're, that they're trying to convey. It just. It looks like. Tell you what, we went to Kimball. We went to T W Brown. Mm -hmm. They never had Dad Day, but. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I did have a dad. <laughs> he but did they have didn't, a dad. But they didn't have they no dad, dad day. day. No. But had they had dad day, <laughs> if somebody's mama came, <laughs> oh, we would have roasted you. We would. We would. They would have canceled the rest of the day, and we all would have gone to the auditorium and have a conversation. Have a conversation with the principal. With the principal. <laughs> Yeah, we grew we, up a we little different. We know this well. Yeah. We, we, we grew up a little bit different. A little different. Um, yeah, yeah. That we would have been like, yo, I know your mama didn't just come up to here. Oh, uh, it would have been nonstop. Oh my goodness. So yeah. y'all pretty much setting these kids up. And I'm gonna tell you what. And you know what? And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. And because we had we had people we knew parents were gay. You know, Did they? We? Yeah, we, it was a couple of them. Tell me later. They could have. They could have came to the school. We'd have been like, oh, oh okay. okay. But if you take a like a mom and dress up like that, oh yeah, you getting talked about. Yeah, yeah. Don't come around here with that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for me, I'm like this. I understand that you know your child might not have a dad present, right? Um, and I think this is a perfect time to explain to them. Listen, everything in life you're not going to have or have access to. Right. I understand that it might not uh, feel good when somebody gets called to the cafeteria because their dad is there and yours is not or whatever the case may be. But work through that problem. Yeah. I don't really think you are helping the problem by, by doing this. Yeah. So what happened is I think you, 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 they're still longing for something. And, and I'm going to tell you. And you dressing up as my dad is not is not filling the void. Oh, you know what he's doing? It's getting me out of class. It's getting me out of class. And I, when I go back to class, I'm going to get made fun of. Basically. If so. you go to T. David Brown. Oh, if you had to went to school with us, it would have been totally different <laughs> story. Listen, I, growing up back then was really good. That was We had freedom to yeah, do stuff we, you can't yeah, do we didn't, now. Yeah. yeah. Now, now you'd be on the news for bullying. Uh, and oh, yeah. Parents would be suing my parents. My mom had no money, so you can't sue my mom. Yeah, ain't getting nothing out of this. <laughs> um, okay. But, so, we got to get into our subject. Uh and I guess we'll hit it real quick for you guys. Yes. Um, so we've been talking about the black family structure. The black the black family structure. And uh, this week we wanted to focus on the black dad. The black father. Yeah. yeah, the black father. Which is the most important component of the black family unit. I had you pause on that a couple of shows ago when you got ready to say that because I wanted I wanted you to have time to elaborate on that yeah. uh, notion. So what? Why do you think the black dad or the dad period is the most important parent in the family structure? Because, because, and and I, I'm not taking anything away from mothers. Let me let me put that disclaimer out there, because mothers, especially black mothers, are the the backbone of of our family structure. But the father is the the head, the brain, the think tank, and and. A dad can, a mother cannot give you what what the dad is put here for. If if you don't have your mother in your life and you have your dad, your dad can still nurture you like like a mother. He can still. Um, it's more natural for him to nurture, nurture than it is for you to show masculinity. It, it's more natural for the father to nurture than it is for the ma- for the mother, like we just saw, mm-hmm. to to be that to be that masculine force in your life. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And we need that. We need that um, as because little girls need to see what it's like to have a positive male um, uh, figure in their lives. Because every choice that she makes in her personal life is going to go directly back to that father. Absolutely. I've often said that I believe that fathers are more important to daughters than they are to the son. Yeah. If we had to put it on a scale. Right. Um, you know, because when you look at it and, and, and see the 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 impact that a dad has. Yes. Okay, so we said this last week. And let's so we'll tie it in. Remember I said nothing makes a man more confident than having just pockets full of money. Right. And you said nothing puts that woman on that untouchable pedestal than to have that guy that loves her, supports her, and all yeah. this other stuff, right? Okay. So with that being said, so now what do you think that relationship is like? from you when you're three, four, four five, five, six, and yeah. dad is there. Yeah. You know, we hear about, you know, uh, uh, matter of fact, a lot of times you hear the conversations of, of girls who had the dad, and you're like, oh, I can tell. You had a dad. You yeah. had a dad or a male yeah. or a father and figure. I, and I've, I've seen guys who said that they really won't even date a girl unless she grew up with her dad. I can understand it. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't grow up with my... 
Bless you, my brother. Bless you, David. But you know what? She did have some some male figures in her life where she was able to to watch. I did, so, I did. Yeah. Shout out to my uncle Earl. Shout out to my uncle Howard. Shout out to my big brother Vincent and my cousins. You know, Chris, Jason, Fat. You know, I I had you know very strong positive um, uh, male influences, but I did not have my dad. Mm-hmm. And 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 that still there's there's still something there that that is. Um, that's missing because that you need that component. We, you know, we, it's almost like you have this beautiful puzzle. And when the dad is, when the dad is not there, the puzzle isn't complete. And, and you could, you could still admire the puzzle. It's still beautiful, but it is just, it's just not complete. And, and I think that when, when it comes to black fathers, because, and I asked you this before, how does it make you feel when people see you with your daughter and they make like, oh my god, you know, it, because when you, when you see a mother with her child, you don't be like, oh my god, is no, yeah, it's just you just doing what you. But do. when you see a black dad, you're like, oh my god, y'all are so oh. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah. Does that make you feel like okay? Well, I'm being a father is like breathing. Like if I, I'm supposed to do this, you know what? <clears throat> am I am am I just? knowledge of of how the world is i understand it right um plus i love attention so i know i get attention when when it happens but (laughs) but i'm just doing what i do yeah i it's it's and me and my daughter we're out we're having conversations about some of everything yeah and and i mean we could be having a conversation she's 10 we could be having a conversation on why the air pressure and tires should be a certain level and i can see people walking by hearing bits of the conversation you and i'll see them stop and i'll kind of look over like yeah, but I said, oh, they're listening because they're like this conversation. I don't know if they're listening, saying, "Hey, I, I appreciate you for having that," or "I wish I would have had that, that," or whatever the case yeah. may be. But I'm just doing what I do, right? And, and and fortunately, I come from a family who, if we don't do nothing else, we don't take care of our, our kids. Right? I mean, I, <clears throat> I have a very, very you know male dominated family, and and we're there for our families. And it started all the way back going to my granddad, and my great grandfather, my my grandfather. Uh, his first wife died, and he had three girls and one boy. And the the sisters of his wife said, "Well, let us take the girls so we can do." It. He was like, "No, these are my kids." Yeah. And so, taking care of our kids is what we do. And so, I don't know anything else. And <clears throat> and I and I may be wrong, but I have I don't know the statistics or the the hard and fast numbers on this. But I have never heard in my life somebody who got in trouble or who had a trouble ridden life, um, you know, in and out of jail or just whatever and said, you know, well, I was raised, I, I was a single, I was raised by a single dad. Like the single dads, when they, when they raise their kids, their kids like grow up and, and, and go and be doctors and scholars, whatever. And just single mothers, you know, we end up on the last podcast. <laughs> You know, I'm not gonna let you sing about it like that, cause, cause you know, you do what you gotta do. You do. This for, is true. For, for what, you, what for you gotta have. Yeah. But we look at the stats and say, how it, how, what's the probability of your success rate? You know, with dad in the house. Yeah. And those those numbers are drastically and, different. And 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 th- those are facts. Those are hard facts. You know, exactly. you can't you can't argue with facts. Yeah. And 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 I sometimes I feel like. I do feel like that the black dad gets a, like a bad rap because, you know, we act like that they aren't there when really black dads are like the most prominent. Stats have said that, but, yeah. but that's that's not the that's not the narrative. That's not that, the narrative that gets put, and, and that's not the narrative that that we as a community even believes. Yeah, we don't even believe. Like, I don't believe know. it. <laughs> well, yours was narrow, so you <laughs> you have a narrow view, okay? I do have a distorted view because he wasn't there. I have a very distorted view of men. I guarantee you would have been totally different. Yeah, it would have been totally different. Yeah. And, I, yeah, I I grew up thinking that that black fathers really didn't love their kids. I, I feel like the only father that really loved their kids was my uncle Earl, and then I felt like, well, once my brother had his kids, once my brother had his kids, I was like, is this how is this how daddies act for real? Because and you can just see the admiration that these kids. And I'm not saying they don't love their mother. But the admirations that look in their eyes that they have for their for their fathers, and I see the same look in my sister in law's eyes when she looks at her dad. Like I like th- there's just a certain look that's that certain. that, and it doesn't matter how old you are. <clears throat> no, 
No. It's just that it's, that, it's admiration, respect, and and love like all wrapped up in one. And I and you know I I feel like that you would you love your mother differently because because she's your you know she's your mm-hmm. mother. Mm-hmm. But but there that certain level of of respect and almost like pride that you yeah. have for your for your father. Um, I I I I grew up and I had. I had four of the guys that I hung out with on Please. a consistent basis. All four of them had a father in the home. And so no matter what house I went to, because those are the houses I hung out at, there was always a dad in the house. Mm-hmm. And there was a certain way that you carried yourself because there was a man in the house. Right. He didn't have to be there at the time. Right. But but the mere fact that there was a man in the house set the tone. Yep. And I went over a friend's house who was just mom. It was a total different lounging experience. Yeah. And so the presence of a man. Now, so we talk about the importance and 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 I know people are going to get in their, their feelings about saying, well, man, how he more important than he ain't here. Okay. We're talking about the, we're talking about for the structure of the family. But and how do you but ask ask yourself this question? How is the head the start? The beginning, mm-hmm. not the most important. Exactly, and and let me and let's just let's just go back to science. I didn't I didn't do this. You got to talk to God about that. Let me tell you how important the father is to begin with. The mother carries the the, the, the child. We know that that's biology, but it's up to the father to determine what what baby you're having. Are you having a boy? Are you having a girl? That, that doesn't come from the mother. That comes from the father. So the father in in conception is already setting the precedence of. Of, What's going to happen? Of, right, of authority, and 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 it's okay, black women, black mothers. It's okay to say the the black fathers are are the most important unit uh, uh, component in our unit because he is the he's the head, he's the authority, and he he is the provider. If he is the provider and he and he sets the tone on how you how you want your son to to be when he's a when he's a uh, a man and what kind of man you want your daughter to pick you would I would hope that you would go after the man that's in your you know mm-hmm. in your home or if you have a father that's in the home and he is not the best father that that's problematic because because then you don't want your son to grow up to be like your daddy you mm-hmm. don't want your daughter to grow up to find you know a uh, a man like your sorry daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you you have this. It's still there. Yeah, it's it still is still there. there. I, yeah. I need counseling. Like, ooh, I, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I need counseling. But so, but I will say I will say that um, there are some phenomenal like men out there who 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 love their kids and and it's not even and and it's still so interesting to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, like I said, I didn't, I didn't see it in my, in my home, but just, just to see how these, how fathers are just like, it's almost like, you know, I always say, uh, when I, when I see a, when I see a dad, like you, like I say, you love your, your baby, like you're a mommy, like you got, you give your baby mommy love mm-hmm. and, and that's really what a father is supposed to do. And you, you have something from Tony Evans. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Tony Evans, uh, Oakland Bible Fellowship. He had a sermon. And he he broke it down how God challenged the man to even raise the kids. Yeah. So th- he said that wasn't the woman's job. That was the man's job. So you're talking about providing and protecting and raising the kids and then and, and so the 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 not pressure, the responsibility on us is massive. <clears throat> and he said, So what is he said, so what is the woman supposed to do? He said, help where you can't. Yeah. So if you have to be out of the house because you have to go to work or something like that, well then that's where she feel in. Or if you out of the house more, whatever the case may be, uh, or if she is a person who can, you know, because women are natural nurturers. Yeah. Right. And so that, they're, that, they're and we, we were created <clears throat> excuse me. We were created to nurture. We were created exactly, for that. Exactly. So so there there is a there is a level and women are more detailed than men. Yeah. So there's a level of detail that a lot of times when you have a man and a woman in the house that she's gonna pay more attention yeah. to those see, details me, and things. Men like that. see the big scene. Yeah. The, the big picture. Yeah. Women see scene by scene. Yeah. And and you can tell just and that's why it's it's the perfect balance. It's it's the perfect give and the take. The perfect alignment. Yeah. Exactly. And and yeah. and I feel like you 
fathers who aren't there, you, you're doing such a disservice to not only your kids, but to yourself. Because, you know, you, you have this person that, that you've created, that you've created, your seed, your lifeline, your legacy. And and to walk away from your legacy is, and I know we don't, in in our culture now, you know, the American black or the black culture, we don't really put emphasis on legacy. We should. Like, like we should. Like we should. But yeah. if we, if we really, if we really thought about legacy and who we are in our bloodline, like a lot of these other cultures did or do. Okay. And think about it. And I, I, f- I started finding out about family crests and, right. and, and, and how people have made them and passed them down. You're right. And so I just started asking random black people that I knew, do your family have a family crest? And they were like, no. I created a family crest for me like, and David. No, no, no. And so that, so nobody had one, which means that the legacy didn't even get passed down. But so you say you created one, meaning that you are starting a crest now in 2000, yeah, whatever, when some of these crests have been passed down since the 1800s Hundreds, and 1700s, yeah. things like that. So, so legacy hadn't always been put in our... Really, legacy was stripped from us. Right. We we well, let let's be fair. Yeah. Let's be honest. Legacy was stripped because from us. because the the tribe the Africans the I'm say true Africans but the yeah. Africans they believe in legacy. They oh, yeah, believe in, the, in in their name. Yeah. They believe in that that last name. And you you carry the the name of your father. And you that's why when you when you get pregnant you gotta I mean when you get married you gotta have a baby right then because you're trying to increase your legacy. You're trying to enrich your legacy. Well, I can't remember what country uh, in Africa that does it, but it, one guy I, God no I want to say he's Ethiopian. I'm, I might be wrong, but he said that you take the way they do it, he said it's so hard to trace back their legacy or trace back their lineage. He said, because you take your dad's first name as your last name. And that's how much that dad you put hit. So wow. his first name becomes your last name. Right. And so then, and so their, their names keeps changing. So you have to really know your history, history to go back. He said, he said, it's hard to go back and just kind of start to find, you know, he said where he's from. It's not a lot of records of this or like that. I bet you, so, I bet you that's some, some funny baby mama drama in court. <laughs> yeah if they have a uh, baby mama drama in court where he's from and i can't remember the exact country it is but he said no he said my he said my name my last name which you know me as my last name that was my dad's first name and my dad his his last name was his dad that's and so he, he said that's how they, he said that's how they trace it back the people that are there the ancestors and everything else they can tell you boom 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 but he wow. was like when you go back to find you're like you have to go and search for those people right because it's not like oh everybody name is this and everybody's name is that so but it's about take just how you take your dad you right. take him by taking his first name making that your last that's name. name that's so that's that's yeah. interesting so i mean it, it it is something that that we know that the way that it was constructed uh biblically if you believe in that uh, the head of the household. So if you're the head of the household, it has to start with you. It is. And if you are missing, then the, it has to start somewhere else, which means that now, instead of starting at the starting line, you're really starting behind the behind starting the line. Behind the starting line, yeah. And so now, because you, you had to start at another place, you're not starting ahead, you're starting behind. And, and let me reiterate, let me reiterate, I'm not saying anything against mothers. Absolutely not. I'm not saying anything against single mothers, uh, because single mothers really are the superheroes of of our community and all single mothers are not single some mothers are some mothers are singles that are mothers and then you have single mothers there's okay. two different distinctions yeah i'm talking that. about single mothers right now thank you for the clarification. which one though mothers who are who? truly single okay not single relationship i'm talking about like single the mother who raised there. me a, a true single mother yeah. who and i'm not i'm not saying anything against mothers and i feel like mothers you know we we give a lot of um credit and everything to them but i i feel like especially the black father like i feel like we should really like i don't want to say hype them up but we but we should really appre- be a, more appreciative of of them especially since society says that they are not there and and i was really surprised cause, because the way i grew up i thought nobody had nobody had no daddy <laughs> except for except for Monty barber she <laughs> her kids had a daddy <laughs> And he was also our daddy, but but when I, but when I saw the numbers, I said, "Oh, black fathers are there. They're prevalent. Yeah. Yeah. Like they they are in the homes." Well, I'm gonna tell you this: when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you don't run. Around, you ain't got time to run around and be like, "Hey, I'm here." You know, only yeah. time it really just irks you is when you hear it in your presence, like, "What?" 
Like, oh I'm my not, God. I'm, I'm not okay. there. What you mean I'm not there? I'm yeah. right here. So other than that, nobody's worried about I know. Look, those I made a, or whatever. I made a be. post the other day in one of these groups, one of my groups, and it said, uh, fathers, oh, I forgot what it said. Some fathers have the luxury of parenting. Or whatever it was, and honey, all, all these black fathers, not me. I I got full custody of mine. I was like, all right then. <laughs> we do not have the luxury, okay? Uh, y'all have luxury parenting. Well, not not y'all. I'm just saying the 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 ancient fathers. Well, you know what? It's a lot of the mothers out there too, and so I guess. They and we we are too. going we are going to talk about that because yeah. I don't know what's worse, the absent father or the toxic mother. Ooh. I and he like. And he loves to bring that up. And I always ask him. <laughs> it's there. I always ask him, you you had like, a, you had a grade A, like prim your mother. Like, what you know about a toxic mother? Listen, my mama got her crazy moments too. Don't do mama. <laughs> and I was do like, not do mama. There, there, was, there was a time when I was young and I was like, let's across the tracks over there because this, <laughs> this might not be what I want. So, I, I feel like we've all had that. My man, my mama crazy. Yeah, so I was like, what's across the tracks? Oh, what yeah. they doing on the other side of town? Because this right here is a little crazy. But no, it, it it it's there because I know of other people. Matter of fact, we all know. How many times you've been in the grocery store, you look at a child, see their mother, and say, Lord, please bless that child. Because if that yeah. is the mother... That child has no chance. And, and okay, I'm glad you said that. So I also see a lot of posts when when a young woman says something about you know says something maybe outlandish or what y'all don't agree with or whatever whatever it is it always falls at the mother's feet. Well, her, her mama didn't teach her this. Her mama didn't teach her that. And I always my rebuttal is, well, where was the daddy? Hey, now I'm gonna tell you that as a father, that's facts because. If you're saying the mama to teach you this, mama to teach you that, well, then where was the dad who was really charged who to be able to raise to you? To raise you. Because I'm going to tell you, if dad was there, and and let's take a step further before we get out of here. Uh, if dad slowed down a little bit and then just get out here and water the grass everywhere, he wouldn't be growing grass in bad soil. Mm -hmm. Okay? You now, I'm not preach. saying it ain't going to happen sometimes because... We fall down, but we got to get back up. Whoa. But <laughs> I don't know where they came from. Uh, but <laughs> Send it back. Wherever it came from, send it back. But well, that's what the song was about. We fall down. It's yeah. about sinning. Uh, <laughs> you know, Saint ain't a sinner who ain't fell down. So every once in a while you get caught Keep up. Keep going. Some, some whap comes your way and you can't get out, okay? But <laughs> we have with, bad business, boy. We have bad business. Uh, but she all I'm saying I is, cook, I don't clean. You know? If you don't, you like that line. I, that's my favorite line. I sing that loud. But <laughs> for the fathers, for the no, no, before you become a father, for the men, okay. I know a lot of times we have, you know, you want to talk about, you know, I don't really care for the time the term toxic masculinity until it used in a certain way. And so let me tell you one. It is in the form of that you feel that you got to knock down every girl you see. Yeah. Because what happens is the the toxicness of what you think you're trying to prove gets you caught up in situations that then you either I don't care for her or let's just say let's say that you do you say okay I'm gonna try to make this work but she is one of those toxic females that just want to keep you at bay because you don't want to be with her long term and then she makes it hard for you to see your kids so what I'm saying is you had the ultimate power at the beginning of who you decide and to have this yeah with. have discernment have yeah. discernment about where you lay your seat as a matter of fact have some integrity about where you lay your seat because your but seat we don't, teach, we don't teach boys integrity. no no we don't we, we don't teach boys integ in integrity when it comes to but you know what? I'm about, to, you're about to hit me. I mean, not on camera. I wouldn't do that right now. But um, I just thought about it. We talk about fathers. Now, there are some little boosters out there. But I'm talking about for the majority. Because I'm in a dad's group. And a lot of the males on there are very protective over their boys. And they're you, you with the talk we have. Yeah. And they, they, you know, because because, I don't they, have, because they understand. I don't have a son, right? And so they'll put a picture up of a teacher that a sexy teacher, whatever. They was like, "What if your son?" 
And so in my head, I take myself back to the 16 year old self, like, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You start to see these dads like, oh hell no, nah, man. Yeah. I'll just and, and you're like, yeah, you're right. Cause you guys are absolutely right. Because if, if somebody were uh, preying on your young son, not, you're supposed to protect her like you do your, your daughter. daughter. And we usually are, hey right, boy, you, you know, you, you know, go yeah. prove yourself. Go, go be a man. That's not being a man. And no. so a lot of the dads are really there. And I'm gonna tell you this, your dad telling you some stuff, because most of the time your dad is the one that you want to prove yourself to, right? Yep. And if your dad tell you, son, you ain't got to do that to, to prove yourself to me, I promise you, it changes. It changes a lot of stuff. My dad said something to me that has really, really shaped really my marriage. Um, he said, son, if, if I were to hear something like that, that, you know, you were cheating, you know, your wife. And he said, man, I would be very disappointed. And you never want your parent to be disappointed. And I was like, so yeah. now this is, this is coming from my dad who had his thing, who had his issues. Has the infidelity, but right? Business, I, I mean, it's out there. I, you know, they had married a lot of times. Okay. So I love you, daddy, but you know, it's public record. Uh, <laughs> You'll be getting phone calls tonight. <laughs> The last podcast, but daddy gonna shut it down. <laughs> right. No, but the thing is, is that he he said that to me, and none of none of that mattered. Only thing mattered is what he said to me. Yeah. So so now it's like, okay, well, I want to live up to the standards that my dad right. placed on me because pretty much he was saying, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I made. Yeah. Right. So so that okay. Listen, I'm gonna tell you another thing. You know, I didn't have any babies when I was growing up. Nobody wanted you. That's not true. Um, somebody did, but she was ugly. Um, <laughs> and he's not talking about me. No, I don't talk about her. She's ugly too. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Uh, I didn't want him. Uh, you remember? Don't you don't it. say her I'm name. Oh my god, I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, but you so foul. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's finish this show. My dad said. One day, you know, and I don't know, my parents had, was real good at this. Things were going great. They always have these conversations with me with when things are going great. He said, hey, let you know something. You ever bring a baby in this house, this will be the last meal you eat here. Now, this is how you got to know your kids. Yeah. I, I love them free food. Yeah, We, we can see you Shut love up. free food, Shut pay up. for food. <laughs> So he but, said, "Damn that! I'm not, I'm not missing no meals I'm for not no meals." No <laughs> My old man said, "Listen, the baby can eat, but your but you gonna have to find some." And he didn't say he. he oh, he, oh, I yeah, I, I, no, I was no, there. No rejecting my family, okay. my, my my story. Uh, he said, "You are gonna have to go find your own food." And I, I went in the kitchen. I never forget. I looked in the fridge. I said, "Boy, so a lot of damn food up here." You mean tell me? I, I, he hey, salivating. Hey, you mean tell me I can have none of this? <laughs> Hey, get away from me, Skeezer. I don't know you. I don't want you. <laughs> so no, but it was it was it was those conversations, it was those yeah. things like that. That that if I knew that I could I could please him and if I knew that I could live up to, you know, how he was trying to teach me, then I was okay and I didn't have to go prove myself to nobody, to nobody else. else. Yeah. That that was the role model. Yeah. So yeah, him and Luke. I mean, that's what I wanted to be. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> last podcast, huh? It's, like, listen, your daddy, finna, your daddy finna shut this all the way down, okay? <laughs> this finna be the last podcast because of him. Oh, so uh, I want you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank the you show. guys. Um, uh, we do appreciate. I don't know what happened. We had technical difficulties. Oh uh, yeah, but... yeah. We, we can't see your comments, but uh, not right now. Up until like the last five minutes, right? Yeah, right. Um, but thank you guys for watching. This this is actually. I feel like this should have been a little longer for us to talk about this, but we can we can always come back. Absolutely, that's the beauty of having a show. Mm -hmm. uh, although we may not come back. This might be the last podcast. <laughs> you might be watching the absolute. Don't set up that toe. Oh, it's daddy business. <laughs> I mean, if my daddy kills me, then this yeah. will be the last one. Yeah. Um, but uh, At least I love bury you. you with snacks. I, I I love you, but you know what? My dad knows that this is. He's a bury me with snacks. Shut up. <laughs> um, he he's a person who is a teacher to many. Yeah. And he knows that 
his stories he tells me he knows they're going to go out and be told and, and you hear him talk to people he, he right. tell people um but the thing is is that it, it it's, shout out to mr jackson you keep me rolling we 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 got we got to help each other out. You know, there's a lot of guys who are not here by other circumstances. They died or something like that. Right. So we got to be a father and a, a mentor to those people like yeah. that. So, uh, but if and shout out to my uncle Earl. Yeah, yeah. Shout I out. love him so much. You know, he he's an Oak Cliff legend. He is an Oak Cliff yeah, legend. He so. can't. We can't go nowhere without Coach. That's yeah. all we hear is Coach. Yeah. So yeah. But uh, so if I'm alive, this will be uh, another podcast. But if not, I hope y'all enjoyed this one because uh, uh, this could be the last. And shout one. out to the Black Fathers. Y'all are killing it. Don't let bitter people, society, the media tell y'all differently. Okay. I I have I have seen. We out you. The light. We doing our thing. So uh, make sure you follow us. Make sure that you keep up with the show. Um, the last podcast on Facebook, underscore the, the last, last podcast. podcast on Instagram. Yep. So make sure you do that. We would love to uh, have you. And drop us. us some, drop us some, some, some encouragement. Some, exactly. Give us something. Let us know that. that Even if you got topics you want us to hit. Yes. Oh, if you have topics that you would like for us to discuss, and you know, we want to, we want you to drop your questions to, you know. But if you have topics, <clears throat> excuse me, topics that you want us to, uh, to discuss, please. Is a chicken bone left in your throat, nigga? <laughs> You been? <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I almost said something. <laughs> Please uh, uh, drop your information, drop your topics, your, your questions. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, you can hit him up with those that information also. Uh, they can hit you up with all of those angry emails that they don't like. The stuff you, you say. Now you can hit me up. Yeah, yeah, do it. Go for it. You I can. <laughs> you can but thank you guys so much for hanging out here on the last podcast we do appreciate you yes remember we are on spotify we are on uh apple music we, we are on uh, uh stitcher so you can go look up the last podcast and find us on there so make sure you follow us on there and when you get to those pages make sure you like those two subscribe to our our um podcast page on there so of course we are always coming to you live on facebook and then we are also getting ready to start the youtube channel yes we're so excited be able to go about back that. and watch those on youtube also right and before we get out of here it's, it's been 152, 152 days. days and counting justice for brianna taylor arrest the cops uh, what, what are we, we waiting on her. yeah i mean we're going to keep saying this until this happens. yeah or please arrest those cops 152 days of of somebody murdering someone and nothing has been done. Nothing's been done. Yeah. So hey, this has been the last podcast. We will see you guys next week. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for the participation tonight. The the vibe was real. So thank you guys so much. All right. See you guys next time. We're out.